Hello and welcome to the Heartistic Podcast. I am so excited to share with you once more. My name is Mbuteng Braven Glapo. I am your host. And on this episode, we discuss about something we all form part of, our society. Is it alive or is it dead? For a while, I have been observing where the focus is on social change and moreover, what I consider to be relevant. I believe that we find ourselves represented by standards which are passionately presented through the platforms we consume, most of which I find to be easily executed because it's a mere act of speaking out or posting. I observe this and I grow more and more intrigued to find a necessary influence that will encourage action. We often see uproars of different kinds happening, racial, political, labor-related, gender-based, The noise will boil down and later come back up again because of poor resolution strategies, social indifference, and poisonous leadership. I do not undermine that we need to focus on our lives. We need to make money for ourselves. But it seems as though that's what life is all about more and more each day. But do we ever think about our social responsibility? The social investment people give to us is that of what is done and less of what can continue to happen over time. We only find out what goes on in shared stories of those who ever get to tell openly. Now, where does this leave us socially? We are social beings after all, and nothing is ever done. in efforts to try and do something about this i decided to call in my friend tolagele to come and join me tolagele hi hi brave and uh thank you so much for having me here on your podcast and i'm really excited to be sharing conversations with our audience and amongst ourselves as well yeah it is really awesome it's very different for us we're normally on stage we're normally doing the things out there (laughs) so having to have this platform where we discuss is new to both you and i but i'm also excited so just tell us a bit about yourself like who are you just introduce us to (laughs) utoli okay utolagele is a very very loving kind person Mm. bubbly personality outgoing extrovert i love people i like to engage with people Mm. um and my profession is uh, I'm in the dance industry. I'm a performer and artist, and yeah, that's what I do for a living. I love dance. I love yeah, and anything to do with arts. Yes. And how long have you been dancing? Uh, I've been dancing since I was a teenager. I was in a dance group called Tavisong Youth Club, so I used to go there every after school. Uh, so we were taught da- uh, dance, traditional dance specifically, and modern dance. So yeah, that's where it all started until I took it to a professional level where I went to an audition for a uh, one year training course at moving into dance and then it all um, started to flow from there. Yeah. Cool. And uh, I know we were supposed to uh, discuss about how we met, but I think you have a more clearer memory. Can you just tell people how we met? Because we've known each other for a long time now, but yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've met in a, a dance class that was being given by David Matamela. And it was actually my first dance class out of school. And I met Braven. So since from then, we started to even tour together. We were privileged to, to, to be able to work in one space and tour together around uh, the world, actually. So, yeah, we've been uh, uh, knowing each other for quite some time now. And we've been working in various productions together as well and corporate gigs, yeah. For those of you who don't know, Tolagele and I just did a duet, our first online show, which was submitted through the National Arts Festival, which has now completely moved to online. Our show is called The Wall. And just to give you a backstory, it was originally a duet between myself as a contemporary versatile dancer and in collaboration with a Banzula Skanda dancer. 
you know so we just did the piece just really highlighting the difference in the two dance genres and exploring how these two genres can be fused together because I just felt like why do we need to have all these uh, differences in genres and when we're in the dance industry so that's where the wall began but when we saw the opportunity or rather when lockdown happened and we need to figure out what we our next move was I approached Tolly and asked her if we could work on the wall online this meant that we had to reimagine the work and reimagine what now are the new differences that we want to look at and the biggest one for me personally was society so, so when you look at the piece or when we thought about the piece we had to really use our imagination because this wall doesn't really exist physically isn't it so it, it's just in our head yes. so we had to really think about what are these walls that we now uh, find that are dividing us what are the differences what did you think about when you heard about this piece Tony? Uh, I think yeah it talks about uh, the wall uh, as Braven is stating that the wall is invisible and it can be our conscious our our mind that are crea that are creating this wall the wall can be our, our the system that we in the walls can be the borders that are, are uh, binding us not to uh, that are dividing us and the wall can also be the map that they've shown us um, the drawing of a map uh, to find out there's no there's no there's no borders actually it's just these walls that we're talking about the walls that are um, the, 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 pr the 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 system of the government and us the the people the communities and the society the walls that are dividing us not to be um, in one in sync and not to be able to listen to each other and hear each other's voices yeah yeah so the point of the piece without trying to give out too much is just to figure out how we can break the wall right how we can now change from all these things that we've known the systems like you've said that we've been living under and these um, constraints that we've been putting ourselves under because even us as people we somewhat discriminate ourselves from the other person be it because maybe we are more wealthier or we are in more prominent positions so it's just the wall in itself whatever wall it is that you have in your life the point talks of the piece rather talks about how to break those walls because I feel for me that this whole lockdown situation exposed so much that we are um, not doing uh, as a society we are not really coexisting you know in a healthy way you know so this piece was just basically for us to also realize or rather open up our mind well I know it was for me open up my mind to see where have I been having walls because maybe on some places the wall was just subconscious it wasn't something that I planned to have do you think you have walls in your life yeah there's plenty have <laughs> so many um, the influences uh, from the how we grew up our, our 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 culture can be our wall as well and the expectations from our parents and from back then to now we not uh, the, the wall that is we need to break that wall whereby we move with times uh, we shouldn't dwell on the past and new things should be should come up uh, you know new creative things uh, creativity should be enlarged and yeah a lot of things um, including in the arts industry as well the, the the walls which where, where where it taps on the the professional so-called professional dancers being separated from the cultural groups you know so it mm. makes us to feel like we are more superior the the, the, the trained dancers who studied contemporary ballet mm. it makes us to feel like we're superior than the people who are doing our our own culture so that wall that is making us not to to be uni to, to unite actually mm, as dancers as, as artists 
and we, we, we are now focusing on modern dance, uh, European style, more than our own culture. So that wall needs to break where we, we collaborate with uh, traditional dancers and as the contemporary dancers coming together. And yeah, that wall needs to break now, yeah. So please do uh, go and check out our show. It's called The Wall. It's on the National Arts Festival until the end of July, which is the 31st this year. And um, yeah, so I want us to now move totally to why we did the piece. Um, let's talk about the social issues that we have in our country, in our world, in our immediate lives, communities. What do you feel um, you have a problem with? What do you feel like are some issues that you really feel we could really solve now? Uh, the issues, my main issue actually is uh, the, the community. Uh, the government is not uh, putting energy and efforts to the, to the community, especially in the arts industry. Uh, there's, there's, there are art centers in the community, in our communities, but they are not working. There's nothing happening there. All the fundings, we don't know what they do with them, and there's a lot of kids out there in the streets that are, are, are they are so talented, but the talent is not recognized, and it's not being groomed uh, and paved well, you know. So those are the, the, the those are the main issues, uh, uh, especially as an artist, that we uh, the government needs to you know focus on the art industries, take the kids to the to the to the right centers so that they can practice their talents and also take this art thing seriously uh same as the other uh departments you know so those are the main issues socially and this art thing if he can focus on it more it can help with can help with the kids uh, in the streets to stay away and reduce drug abuse and all these um substance abuse and alcohol and be aligned you know yeah okay uh, I hear you <laughs> but I have to uh, disagree with you because um, yeah no I we we I feel like we have to get to a point where we really understand that we have a government that really doesn't care at all about its people I mean not to say that there aren't any government officials who don't do the work who don't you know we know we I'd like to believe that, that they are there, but of course their voices are muted because of whoever has the most power. Um, so, and we've had art centers for such a long time. Uh, and I just feel like it's, it's, it's by saying the community, it really is the community's uh, task to, to, to do something about the art, about the community, about the social ills that we have. We, with our teenagers and social you know what I'm saying I feel like by looking at the government we're still gonna have another decade or two decades of the same problem like we've had already you know so mm -hmm. I just feel like yes it's true the government really could help but just like the president said that it's in our hands like it has been in our hands from from longer than that so I just feel like with that yes it will be an issue for quite some time but it can be solved if we the community because we are the community we really are the community if we now just get to get to work and roll up our sleeves and like i like i used to like how back in the day uh when you know our parents we used to care when it really wasn't the fact that you now are the mother to mm -hmm. you know you are the mother to the the, the community. children that are walking around the street you know what i'm saying when they start a fight or when they start swearing mother to Ghana, you would now really be like no um you know what i'm saying so that has lost, that has been lost, you know, and I feel mm -hmm. like it, it, that, that now has given the opportunity for all these substance abusers and all these uh, things that these kids are doing, uh, opportunity to just even grow because no one is going to say anything. They're just going to look and be like, hi, as opposed to thinking, too. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. now in the future, he, when these children are now 30, they're the ones who are going to be wanting to be president. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? And with this, there's a moral issue that the community has lost. There's a moral issue uh, that the community has now not cared about. Yeah. So that's what I feel about that. <laughs> okay, so when I talk about the government, I don't only talk about the president, the ministers and all. As you said, uh, the, 
the, it, it's all on our hands. But I'm talking about the people that are hired by the government. They are the ones that are representing our government. And they make it hard for us to access these uh, uh, art centers. For instance, if it's a community war, why should I have to pay such an, a, a, a lot of money to use the space? I mean, I'm trying to make uh, a living. I'm trying to create a job. Uh, and then now I have to pay for the uh, community center. Yes, you are very right. I agree with you because I also would teach at a community center and I don't understand why it's called a community center, but I have to pay for it. I'm part of the community. We have uh, La Panga Semores Isaacs in that museum. You know, you have, to, you have to pay to get into that. And I feel like those things that are meant for us, they are not really meant for us. So yeah, the people that are the municipal leaders or the ward people who are, you know, the people that we vote for and they deploy to work, you know, hand in hand with us are now the ones blocking us. So yeah, I agree with you on that part. So what are your social issues when I'm work? Littering. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> I have a problem with littering. You know, it's, it's, it's a peeve. It's a pet peeve. I don't understand what's wrong with people who can't throw stuff in the trash can. I'll give you an example. I was on my way to maybe a gig or a rehearsal. I was sitting in the front seat, Cebu 16 bus, and this lady on the who was sitting on the on the door, she was eating a KFC, like literally chowing it. And you know, sometimes other drivers don't even allow you. But that guy was fine. He he allowed her, and she just chowed. And the whole paper bag, everything, she finished, wiped her hands with the serviette. She put it everything back in the paper bag, rolled it, and she put it right there on the floor by our feet and that was it she was done like that just showed me like yo I, if i if i could scream you know what i'm saying so and mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 a lot of things people even throw it out of the window the other day i saw someone who threw out the same kfc bag out the window driving people throw you know what i'm saying so yeah. what, what are, where are you throwing this where are you throwing it and uh, someone else would also tell me that no but we're creating job we, jobs you know there's people who need jobs they can come and pick and i'm like are you for real you know so that's like another mental thing it's not even littering it's actually a yeah. mental yeah it's a mental it's a mentality that people mm -hmm. have you know that they really they, they don't think when they do something and they don't care you know that just doesn't sit well with me and that's something that can change easily you really can't just finish what you eat and put it in the trash can and then Labantu who work at Pick It Up or who the waste companies can have some dignity at least to know it's okay. We are helping the community keep, you know, keep itself clean, but they're also helping us. But now mm -hmm. having to throw things right at their feet because you know they're going to pick it up, mm -hmm. that's just something that I, I don't like. So what are your social issues, you, our listener? What are some of the issues that bother you so much? And more importantly, what are the solutions? Some of our friends were kind enough to share theirs, and here's what some of them have to say. I think that um, one of the key things to learn for him is really bad to, especially about to run through that, you know, um, on a cultural, on a psychological, on a spiritual, you know, on a political and economic level on all levels actually is that we don't show up for ourselves sometimes the opportunities are there but we don't make the nest we don't take the necessary steps we don't make the necessary efforts we don't show up uh, at our best we don't apply ourselves fully to these opportunities because you know it seems like we have this mentality of receiving handouts all the time um and it, and it, it is a culture that has been really recreated even by the system uh where um you know we have we have the culture of of getting things for nothing of handouts of begging of all the time and we have um we feel oh, we have the right to get things for free. We don't have to work for them. We don't have to apply ourselves to to get that. So, I mean, we have a grand culture. 
you know a culture yeah, we're always sons of elegant who really funding who really in we never look inside ourselves to really see that we have solutions we ourselves have solutions we don't look at ourselves and check what it is that we have that we can take what we have recreate something for ourselves instead of always trying to consume from the outside we can be creators because seriously you cannot say you are liberating people when what you are doing is literally taking them out of slavery and turning them into dependence instead of empowering them to stand up on their own and have their own things and have independent thought and be creators yeah that's also from also from Mlabo. Thank you so much for sending that message. Oh yes, yes, yes. And yeah, she's actually tapping on stuff that are, are happening in our country. Uh, we are so depending on the government. Uh, for instance, in our in our industry, in our uh, the arts industry, we always rely on funding to start something, and we always waiting for people to spoon feed us. I mean, uh, there's plenty of auditions there's so many auditions happening around but we never show up for auditions we never show up for online stuff they always show posts about auditions which is a, a, a very serious issue because we cannot always wait for people to come and serve us we need to go and knock on those doors you have to speak uh, talk to people ask about the information you have to be uh, ask for knowledge you have to know how do we get there for instance um, if I know as a dancer that there's someone who's been working in maybe overseas or in a dance cruise ship or whatever, I have to get information. How did you get there? Show me how, how, what, what is the process of getting there? So we always have to find information and ask people to help you as well. So we must stop having pride and thinking, uh, no, that line is going to kill a lot of us, especially. And as a youth, and we have so many um, ideas we are we are talented we have so many business ideas that we 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 can start or we should have started long time ago but but because we we are scared and we don't want to uh ask information and just act on it yes yes and i will admit that i have also been very scared for the longest time in my career uh a lot of uh thinking just thinking in my head that you know what I figured it out. I know what I'm gonna do. That alone has 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 delayed me in so many ways. Now that I think back, to wow, well, I should have really been involved and involved myself. I would have had a, quite a lot of contact and even been more further. So yeah, that is very powerful to just not be scared to really take the situation in your in your hands and ask the people. If you don't know, it's okay to mm. ask and go find out. I mean, it's all for in the direction of your purpose mm -hmm. is in the direction of your your passion and what you want to do in bettering yourself so yeah that's a very powerful one we have another voice note here from my good friend Udebuo. let's listen uh, currently living in Kahiso Krugersdorp and so Nasek is born not only here where I stay but all over all over wherever I go is that release us around so we need to support one another we need to support one another and stop seeing each other as competition you know we need to keep the capital circulating amongst us we need to keep the money circulating amongst us in order for us to better our lives and better our businesses you know we are stronger when we are together than we are divided thank you can't stress this enough this has been so true for the longest time but it seems like we don't get it, it seems like we don't understand do you get it i don't get it <laughs> you don't get it <laughs> yeah we don't support each other especially like all over i wouldn't say in the art industry only but we don't support each other. If if someone uh, creates a job or maybe for like instance a show, we don't show up because we think it's a competition or what. But uh, if you can break that wall as well, because mm -hmm. it's a wall. It's another wall. Yeah, that's own. a wall. Because instance, um, 
if if someone for instance braven i know braven is good and contemporary i'm good at traditional dance but we can exchange it's 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 more of like supporting each other i i benefit from you you benefit from me so it's like a reciprocated mm-hmm. a process so we do we have to support each other no matter what because we we are black people at the end of the day and we kn- we are the ones who know our stories we are the ones who know our mm-hmm. issues we know what we're facing in our communities the government doesn't even come to our 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 places where we stay mm-hmm. we are the ones who sees the situation each and every day in our mm-hmm. daily lives so we are the ones who need to support each other and find solutions where where, where, where possible you understand mm-hmm. yeah there's power in being together exactly. you can't be in your own corner doing your own thing and then when you need support where you gonna go so there's power in just being together so think that way so whatever other social issues that you have please think about them and think solutions okay so that's where we're gonna leave it for today thank you so much till i get it was awesome having you here and thank you for just everything that you've been sharing oh thank you so much as well for having me Thank you for listening. We only touched on the tip of the mountain of social issues, but ultimately what we want to encourage you to think about is solutions to discrimination, unemployment, Ubuntu, and all the other issues and act upon them for a better society. Catch us on the next episode. Goodbye.